Okay, morning, um, Ralph. Mm-hmm. Uh, first things first, any injury news since yesterday? Anything happened overnight? Uh, not so far. I haven't seen all the guys so far. Uh, they're coming now uh, in the club uh, and a little bit later because we train in the afternoon and then we will know more. I would have said about half an hour ago that there was only one big story in town, but there's two now. Um, first of all, it really affects you as well because your opponents have dispensed with their manager. How does that affect, first of all, your reaction to that? And secondly, how does it affect your preparations? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, we don't have enough, uh, a really lot of time to prepare for this game. It makes it even more difficult now because it's always uh, uh, the, all the work they analyzed too for the last uh, weeks uh, is, is gone then. And, and uh, yeah, we don't really know. Um, it's, it's even difficult because on the weekend they have a big game, the big final. So the moment is a bit uh, strange, I think. But uh, in the end, uh, we have to handle it. And uh, yeah. Concentrate on us. Uh, have a look at what, what what we can do. Just on your reaction to the the his, Mourinho leaving Tottenham itself. I mean, it didn't look comfortable there for a while, did it really? Yeah, I don't know the reasons or something like that. I only heard that uh, it is definitely uh, that he he's not there anymore. And uh, yeah, uh, this is what we what we have to to handle now. Just finally, for me, you. You answered the question about the Super League last night, I know, but just with the benefit of a few more hours consideration, did you still feel so strongly about it, against it? Yeah, I think there cannot be, cannot be any other, any other uh, opinion about it, to be honest, because I think yeah, we lost yesterday again, but I, I was not sleeping good because I think it was definitely a big threat, uh, what, I, what I see here coming up with this, with this uh, uh, war, if you want, uh, from from the big clubs against against all the national league, uh, national leagues, and and um, yeah, I think um, that uh, we will see what brings the future. But I think uh, it's a big threat, and we have to fight very hard against it. And hopefully, we we have the fans on our side that they are going with us. And uh, without the fans, football will not work. Um, and Finally, it's not it's not it's not finalized. But I think uh, in the beginning you have to to uh, step very straight against it. And for me, um, it's no reason, uh, no no question that there's there's absolutely 100% agreement to to the steps they ever want to do. But it's not so easy because they have a lot of power, these big clubs, and uh, therefore, yeah, they they use this now. Thank you very much indeed. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, Jonathan Overend at PLP. Morning, Ralph. Um, clearly, Jose has, has managed three of the biggest clubs in 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 the league. Um, what what's your um, appreciation of his contribution to English football? Would you say? Yeah, I mean, uh, he's maybe the most successful manager in in in, in the in the moment uh, with the, winning the most titles from all, I think, so far. And uh, yeah. What can you say? He has such an imp- big impact also in the English football so far, and uh, it's uh, he hadn't had a very good year with Tottenham. To be honest, uh, they are below what they try to to achieve. Uh, they had a good start, I think, in the season, and then for some reasons, injuries a little bit similar to us or whatever, uh, he dropped back, and then uh, yeah, this is a normal. The normal rules in football, when you're not successful, you're under pressure as a manager and then uh, there's uh, the moment where the club uh, decides to, to, to sack you. And can I just ask you to expand on what you were saying about sort of the disruption to your, your preparation? Uh, I mean, how much does a change of manager affect your, your plans ahead of a match like this? No, it changes everything because <laughs> everything you... Tr- Normally, tell your players uh, what they have to expect is, is from one day to the next is not there anymore. Eh? It would have been even difficult because we know that they have a big game on the weekend. So uh, to find the right squad for the for the for the Wednesday game, I think is it would have been uh, difficult anyway. Eh? So now it's even more, I think. But uh, yeah, um, we have a few hours to concentrate for this and uh, we will try to find a team that that is that is after the ASA game fit enough to to compete against them uh, and just a, a general question finally from me how important ralph is it now after after the disappointment of yesterday to avoid any sense of i don't know drifting maybe through the next 
the final few few games and how do you ensure that doesn't happen yeah it's important that we that we play defensively like we did yesterday but offensively much better because it was uh, by far one of our worst games offensively yesterday for both sides to be honest it was a typical semi final yesterday with a lot of work against the ball nobody wanted to go one down it's always difficult in one game when you when you are too offensive in the beginning and then both teams have been very very uh yeah passive with closed visor to be honest and and then in the end it was uh, yeah one goal that decided this game and we we had in the offense not the, not the quality in this game to to really be a threat for them thanks Ralph. thank you okay adam blackmore ralph good morning good morning um You've had a night to sleep on it. You talked about it there. We've all had a night to sleep on last night's game. Um, do you have regrets that tactically or anything else, you didn't gamble enough as a side? You didn't, you know, take more risks? You know, the risk-reward thing we always talk about. But to go out without a shot on target, having really wanted the competition, all of you, I mean, the players must be feeling low. You must be feeling low. Do you, do you, do you think you regret, do they regret the way you played? Uh, um, to be honest, after the game, it didn't felt that bad, especially not our game with the ball. When I see it once again, you can definitely say that with the ball, we had not our, our behaviors, what we normally had in the last games. But it was clear when you're a little bit more concentrating after conceding three goals against West Brom and playing against a strong side like Leicester, that you had in the beginning especially, uh, keep the fullbacks a little bit deeper uh, to protect uh, yourself a little bit more from the counter-attacks. I think we have been brave with high defending against Vardy and, and Yenacho, but, but so they also had not a lot of chances. Uh, this was uh, the part of the game that worked quite well, I think. But you are right that our uh, overload, what we normally try to create and what we have to, to create to, to create chances, we haven't had in any time of the game because we had only three, four players sometimes in the final third. And then it's for us very much about one against one situations and yeah, there we didn't have the, the power to, to go through. And uh, this was the reason why we had not a lot of chances. But uh, the, in such a game, you must take the few moments where you win balls high on the pitch to, to have a good transition. And there where we, we have been much too slow, not with the quick pass deep, not with a good offer in the, in, the, in, the, in the last line where you can use them as a role player to lay up for somebody else who scores them. And this all was definitely missing. And this is very disappointed because I think it was a big chance um, when you are uh, against such a side in the, half, in the semi-final. You must especially in the offense show more, more quality and we didn't yesterday. Um, Jonathan t touched on it there with you about the rest of the season. Obviously, I'm sat here watching every game, worrying that the season will just fade away a little bit. And you must be worried about that slightly. Um, how much of a test is this of the player's will and your motivational abilities now to, to turn the end of the season into a positive like you did at the end of last season? Yeah, this is the goal now. And we have seven games to go and uh, we still need to, to take points. And... Uh, I know this situation that is sometimes can be a mentally booster when you don't have this target of a final maybe anymore. But on the other side, you must be sure that uh, um, especially the league is what, what in the end uh, gives you a good basement for the next season. And I think everybody knows that we still need points. And as soon as we get these points, that we are safe, uh, the better. And uh, I mean, for this, we need... The players on Wednesday, they are fresh, uh, want to show up. And uh, yeah, this is for me the job to find the right ones. Um, we talked about the, you know, not, not finding the final third as you wanted. Does yesterday's semi final and the second half of this season just reinforce your need and desire to knock on the club's door and say, hey, I need some strength in numbers here. I need, I need more players. I need something more to work with. There's no question about that. Uh, we definitely step on the same spot all the time. We are not moving forward. There's no development uh, like we wanted to see it. We had one very good term in this season where we, we overperformed with, with, with the way we played. And, uh, but when you are not uh, able to invest in, in, in 
changing the squad in the summer, then you will end up again in the same position on the table and it's again a fight about uh, staying in the league because we tried everything uh, to, to come to a different level. But, but as soon as we have uh, yeah, not every player on the highest level, we have also not that depth in the squad to, to be, be then strong enough to put pressure on the guys. They are not performing well and I think this is what we need next season. And Jordan, if I could just supplement that, sorry. Um, do you think contract talks with certain players are distracting from the squad in the dressing room or on the pitch? Are they distracting the, 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 the ultimate aim to get everybody focused every match? Uh, for the yesterday game, it couldn't be a, a big uh, uh, topic because uh, it's, it's a big chance for everybody. And I could not see, especially against the ball, that they were not investing a lot. Uh, mm. But uh, for for the rest of the season, I mean, contract uh, talkings are always part of our business and a professional player cannot be affected on, on that. If it is like this, then you, you know, he should think himself about how professional he is. Um, finally, we have the same problems that many other clubs also have. We are not the only club who has uh, players there running out of the contracts and have offers maybe from other clubs. Uh, but uh, the best thing or the best way to to make a step forward as a player is to perform well. So there's no alternative to do this. And it never helps if you are uh, yeah, ever running out of contact, having one year left or two year left, uh, when, you're, when you're not performing well. It never helps. Nobody. Thank you for your time, Ralph. Good luck Wednesday. Thank you. James, talk to Good morning, Ralph. Good morning. Ralph, what response are you hoping to see from your players? today and what challenge will you give them for the remainder of the season? Yeah, the, the challenge we have is now to, to go to Tottenham on Wednesday and, and uh, yeah, be a team that is able to take something there. It's not easy, but we have to go there and we have uh, lost against them the first game very high. So we want to show that we are now better. I, I know this is in the moment. Um, uh, not so easy, but I think um, after this game on Sunday, we have shown defensively that we can defend better than against West Brom. And on this, we have to build up. And in the offense, yeah, the few chances we will get, we must be more clinical and hopefully uh, finding the target better than yesterday. You've got a close affinity to German football. How proud are you of the stance that Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund have taken? Because it seems that they're not going to put themselves forward and, and be involved in this Super League. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know, know all the backgrounds. I only know that they are so far not part of this. Um, um, I spoke about the big threat I have uh, because of the Super League, uh, because it, especially for the Premier League, it is the, the league that has the, the biggest impact from such a league, to be honest, especially when uh, the UEFA will then try to ban them from the National League because the Premier League will not be the same without these clubs. This is for sure. I think... Um, especially for the Premier League, uh, I always spoke about that it is nice to watch the big games, but it's also nice to see sometimes a smaller team winning against a big team. And this is what this makes this Premier League special. And it's, it's very hard to imagine that this all should go from one time to the other. Uh, but there is a big threat, uh, to be honest. Uh, this is definitely something that we, we, yeah, we have to take very, very serious. And, and finally, can be an earthquake for the for the for the football, uh, yeah. not only in Europe, worldwide, and UEFA and FIFA have a tough job now. How worried are you about the threat it poses a club like Southampton, a club that eventually wants to find themselves in those positions towards the top of the table and challenging once again in Europe? Yeah, the question is if there is any Europe League uh, uh, anymore. A Champions League will not exist anymore when this uh, with the Super League will happen. And uh, what that means to the football, I mean, we cannot even even uh, yeah have a, a few idea what what how much how much of an impact that would have for the for the whole football eh? and for the all nations. The, the Nations League are, are normally um, they are gone. They are all not interesting anymore and. And I think uh, this is, this is uh, a very big blow for, for the football. Thanks, Ralph. All the best. Thank you.
Okay, we'll move on to the section embargoed for 10.30 this evening and we'll start with Dan Sheldon. Thank you, Jordan. Good morning, Raul. Um, following on from James's question about the Bundesliga, obviously over there they have a 50 plus one rule in terms of ownership. Now, the Premier League doesn't have that and we see a lot of silent owners. I'm sure fans would, the Southampton fans would say the same about Mr. Gao, the club's owner. How important is it that fans have more of a say in these issues and aren't just left behind by owners who live, who live elsewhere? Uh, it's not so easy, so easy to answer question. To be honest, uh, in some moments it is important to to have a, a short, a, a short ways to make the decisions, short uh, distances to, to to or only a few player, a few people in the club to make decisions is important when you want to move move quick. On the other side, as a controlling uh, part of a club, it is very helpful to have a strong fan base. Yeah, this is definitely. Uh, important in football and gets even more important when you see how how much of a financial uh, factor meanwhile it is for 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 uh, uh, for every country and um, therefore the the fan interest is is definitely one of the highest uh, things we can we can look at and and without fans we, we see it now in that moment when we play without fans it is not the same football and um, but I don't see that a Super League, when it is good promoted, that the fans will not sooner or later also join this. So it will definitely happen. And this is the problem. And what, I'm, what I see as the biggest threat is that there is no competition anymore. And the European football or general football worldwide is always based on competition, on being relegated, on being or having a chance like Leicester becoming a champion one time. And maybe I'm a little bit too traditionalist for this. Um, uh, I see it in this way, but I know that there are a lot of uh, yeah, grown-ups out there. They don't care about the tradition of the Premier League or anything else. They go for this uh, anyway. If this is offered, then they take it. And this is what these big clubs know. And, and this is the reason why, why they go this, this way. This path. And, and a second, second point. On the, the players that are, uh, have a year left on their contract or their contract is expiring this summer, last year, you took a decision to leave Pierre Emil Hoiberg out of the team because he hadn't said he was going to commit beyond 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 next summer. Essentially, have you thought about doing that to some of the players now? When you look at Ryan Bertrand, Vestergaard, we are not so far in this in this thoughts. To be honest, we have to focus now for what happens next year. This is always normal when you have the chance to stay in the league, and then you can concentrate on the players. They are also next season here. I think this gave us the chance to build something up, and this was maybe one of the reasons why we had a very good start in the in this season because we had this team. We played with Orient Prousy the last six games, and then we could immediately step up in the in the next season. And then we had this 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 uh, automatism build it. I mean, this is my my responsibility. I, I mean, this is this is when we when we don't know now how many players are coming next season, then I need to face for the players they are here still next season. Or, and, and this is, I think, a normal behaviour you have to do. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you. Adrian Skimba. Hi, Ralph. Um, just, uh, just one of the questions uh, on this kind of Super League breakaway uh, prospect. As one of the clubs who would potentially be, be left behind if, if the Big Six were to leave, what would what, what sort of state would that leave the Premier League in? What, what would that mean for the prestige of the competition? Yeah, a massive blow because it's not the top league anymore. It's in the moment maybe the best league in the world. I say it's Champions League the whole year and this is gone from one day to the other and this is what the big clubs know and they know about the power they have. Uh, I don't know if they know that it is always um, also, uh, I say, the salt in the in the in the meal that you have also these games against the lower uh, the lower bottom teams when you struggling there because this also makes it so interesting for the for the people out out there and there is a reason why the Premier League was so interesting for for everybody out there all over the world and a, a Super League I think sure it is it is uh, it's like a um, it's interesting if if you play only with the best league teams in the world against each other all the year sure I can understand this. For the first year, for the second year, uh, it would be interesting when it lasts longer. If it becomes normal, and if it still is this interest like it is now, when it's something special for you, when Bam City plays against Real Madrid, 
uh, one time a year or two times a year. I don't know. Uh, I cannot look so far in the future. I don't think, to be honest. Um, I, I think such a successful um, sport like football that has done, must have done a lot of things right in the past. Otherwise, it wouldn't be still so interesting for everybody. And uh, it is like we never changed the rules massively. When we changed the, this way of, of how we look for the competition so massively, I don't know how it will change for a longer term uh, the football dramatically. Thanks so much, Ralph. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Tom Leach. Hi, Ralph. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hello. Commiserations on yesterday. Um, if I can just ask again about this Super League, um, you just described it as a war by the big clubs. Um, but does this not just make you sad more than anything? I mean, your managerial career started in the lower leagues in Germany. You know that there's clubs out there at the minute that are financially struggling. They've got staff on reduced pay. This is just a terrible time for smaller football clubs. But this just isn't the answer at all, is it, for any of them? It just completely leaves these clubs behind. Yeah. When you, leave, when you read the message, I only had seen one message from the Super League uh, proposal that in the end there will be more money for the smaller cl clubs because they will create more money. Uh, it's hard for me to believe this, to be honest. Um, I cannot think that when the Premier League is then the championship <laughs> and the championship is then the League One, if this helps anybody from us. So this is... Uh, but. Again, uh, the interest of the big clubs is definitely understandable. When you when you hear the amount of money they can earn, that they can get there, yeah, it, it is clear, and it was always clear that this um, thing will always come up, and uh, they will try to do this. Um, and then I'm not somebody who can look so far in the future. I don't know if if uh, what are the, the results of this. Uh, it will very much depend on how much acceptable it is for the fans. I think this is always because all what we do is we do it for the fans. And if we lose them, and I don't know if this happens, then I, to be honest, I don't really believe that we will lose them because a game between Chelsea and Real Madrid is more likely to be seen than maybe Southampton against uh, West Bromwich. I don't know. Uh, not not boring about my my my, my club, but um, so I cannot see that this that the fan interest is not there for such a super league. No, but the threat I just spoke about it that I see for the future of the football. But uh, yeah, um, we will see in what direction it goes. But uh, it doesn't feel good to be honest. I mean, it's clear that you're passionate about it. Just hearing you speak about it, but I just wonder whether. I mean, if you were a manager of one of these clubs who'd signed up for it, how you'd feel this morning? I mean, would you would you think about leaving? Would you think about making your your feelings known on it to your CEO? If Southampton, let's say, were one of the top six and they'd they'd signed up to this, in the first line as a manager, you're always part of your club, and you have to, uh, and this is what you have in your contract. You have to fully commit to the hundred percent to the interest of your club. Uh, so this is what you have to announce outside. And uh, we are part of this club. We are, we are here employees of this club and uh, have to do what the club tell us to do. Uh, but uh, apart from this, you have your own meaning, your, your own, your own meaning uh, tells you something different. And then you are immediately in a, in a conflict what you have to, to work out. And if you are feeling that it is not your world anymore and uh, this is not what you want, then you have to decide what you want to do. Okay, Ralph, thank you. Good luck on Wednesday. Thank you. Okay, Dan Rose. Good morning, Ralph. You okay? Good morning. Um, I actually, uh, obviously you've spoken a lot about the Super League there, but I actually wanted to ask you on a different time here about actually your own squad, which is obviously something that's a little bit <laughs> of a novelty. Um, you, you mentioned last week about Michael Obafemi coming back into training with the group following his, his injury and his surgery. Just how would you describe how well that, that recovery process has gone for him and how nice is it to see him back in and around the place on the training pitch? I mean, it looks definitely good. Uh, I was surprised uh, that um, I didn't... Uh, have him on the list for this season, to be honest, because it was a surgery on his muscle and normally it takes time. He looks good, he looks fit. 
so far. Uh, we must have a look when we any steps more in in the in the team uh, training uh, sessions um, how he looks then. But uh, I'm happy to have him back. You um, I think you said earlier in the season he's he's a guy who must learn quickly about about his game and and everything like that. Are you been at that time on the sidelines has given him chance to sort of take stock, analyze where he is with his career at the moment, and and look for what he can do moving forward? I hadn't have so much contact in the last two months with him because uh, he's always with a with a recovery group or with a with a physiotherapist. And um, but what I have heard is that he took it this time very serious, his rehab, uh, that he um, worked very hard. And I have often in my career made the experience that sometimes for some players, it is quite helpful to have something of a big injury uh, because then they are coming back with, with much more effort, with much more professionalism because they see that it is not simply there that you are a professional footballer, that you have to work hard for it. And if you do it in this way, then you get a, a different mindset sometimes and that ch can change everything in your career. And I have very often seen uh, players then yeah, having a completely different mindset, what you as a manager normally cannot change in that way. Perfect. Thanks, Ralph. Thank you. Okay, Jordan Davies. Uh, good morning, Ralph. Um, unfortunately, back to the um, Super League, just briefly. Um, is it right that the managers are having to front up and take responsibility for a, a decision or a scheme that isn't theirs and that they may not agree with? And, and should it be more a, an owner's responsibility to do this rather than sending managers out into the firing line? Yeah, I mean, uh, in the end, we are standing in front of the cameras and we're getting asked like you do it now and, and uh, we have to, to, to give the answers. Uh, There's not very often somebody else doing it. I think that also in this in the big clubs, this is what I've heard that not a lot of, a lot of people knew about this, that what's going on in the background. Uh, um, I only hear from my from my uh, German about the discussions with the Premier League that there was nothing in, in the pipeline so far. And yeah, anyway, it is how it is. We have to to answer the questions, although we don't know everything about it, and and this makes it always a little bit difficult. We can only say uh, speak about our own opinion, what we think is not good for football or what we don't want to have. Uh, but in the end, uh, we are not really the, the people that get asked for it. <laughs> and in a very selfish way, do you have to look at this opportunity against the managers, a, a managerless Tottenham, as a great chance to? to win and take advantage of a bizarre situation and then how tough is that to get your head around it that you need to just ignore what else is going on and, and focus on the game yeah i mean um for them it's 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 a yeah a, a situation i mean that it's nothing new in football that the manager gets sacked and the new one is coming so um, it's more often for the opponent for the next opponent more difficult than for their own because they have uh, they know what what manager stands in front of them, and, and, and he gives them new advices. But you, as an opponent, you don't have new advices, and, 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 and you don't know really what what uh, is coming up for you. But uh, yeah, as I said, anyway, the preparation for the Wednesday game is a difficult one. We know this. We don't have a lot of time. Uh, the team will change quickly. I think our team also like their team because they have a big game on the weekend. I think they will also. I rest a few players for this game because it's the only chance for them this season to win something big, and that's the reason why I expect uh, yeah uh, two teams that are really good prepared for 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 each other. But in the end, uh, it's important that we show up on on Wednesday night that we are competitive. Thanks, Ralph. Thank you. Hey, Tony Banks. Hello, Ralph. Hello. Hello. Um, sorry to ask you one more question about the Super League, but I was uh, thinking sorry <laughs> about the players. You know, it's uh, harsh on the fans and not what the fans want, but the players as well, obviously they're employees of their clubs, so they don't, may not have much choice in this. But if UEFA carries out their threats, um, we're talking about players may not be able to play for their countries. You know, international football will be ruled out. So that's unfair on the players as well, isn't it? Yeah, but it's yeah, the only chance, only chance, the only really as the UEFA has uh, to keep them away from playing this league. But if this stops uh, this whole project, uh, hard to say. 
I mean, a World Cup to play for a player is definitely even bigger than the biggest club competition in the world. I think this is. I think we all agree. To win the World Cup for your country is something you you dream of as a young player. And um, if you, but but how can you how can you decide it as a player not playing for this club who plays in the Super League and then not playing for your country? I mean, this is hard to hard to to see this to be honest. Yeah? But but um, I think it's the only way for the UEFA and for the FIFA to stay that hard if you wanna if you wanna stop this. Uh, I don't see a lot of other options you have.